family businesses make up more than three quarters of the global economy, and here in Singapore, they account for more than 60% of listed companies. But across the globe, a surprising number are not prepared for the founder to step aside, with serious consequences for the financial health and viability of these businesses. Joining me is Su Kwan, who heads up PwC's Center for Family Business Excellence, as well as leading their Asia-Pacific entrepreneurial and private clients team. Thank you very much for joining us, Su Kwan. Thank you. So Su Kwan, how long have you been working with family businesses, and what is the most significant change that you've seen over that time? Anita, I've been in the PwC for 28 years, and the last 10 years I've been working with a lot of family businesses. 10 years ago, when I talked to the Petraj and the Metraj, you know, about family business, they will try to be polite but not want to address this issue. Ten years later, now you will have a lot more awareness, largely because many of them are in the 60s and 70s now, and maybe it's time for them to think about it. But more importantly, is when they flip open the newspaper, they see various families fighting, and they do not want their own family name to be in the newspaper for the wrong reason. So what practical steps can a business owner take? It is best to actually have a plan. Set out up front in a document, what is it that you want for this business? What are your values? What are your vision? What is your mission? What is your purpose? And what is this family business for? And who play what role? The role of the next gen, the role of the first gen, the role of the professionals. Be clear of their responsibility and their accountability. And importantly, communication. How can the first generation then encourage the second generation to take over the reins? What are the strategies that actually work, especially when you're appealing to millennials? We often encourage family businesses for the next gen to spend a couple of years outside first, to gain outside experience, to see the world a little bit. When you come back in the family business, you are able to bring some of these good practices that you see into the business. Deciding what role you want the next gen to play is also equally important. One is that of a steward. And that is really just being a custodian, making sure that the business doesn't get derailed and you just carry on. The other is that of being a transformer. To transform the business from what it is today to be able to survive in the next century. You know, dealing with all the disruption, the digital, the innovation. And so long as you know what role that you want your next gen to play, then I think there will be greater clarity. And if you have a couple of children, doesn't mean all have to play the same role, which is often an issue with many family disputes. How can business owners plan for a smooth transfer of their personal wealth and assets to the next generation? And should this be handled separately to business succession? I think it can be handled separately, but it cannot be in isolation of each other. And in terms of protecting the wealth, you have to decide how much you want to leave for the next generation. And your wealth, you need to decide how much you want to put in the business, how much you want to put in the family. Because you also need to take care of family members that are actually not in the family business. And you might also want to take care of future generations. So how you distribute your wealth, allocate your wealth, becomes important. There are many mechanisms in place. Many banks can advise family business owners on that, setting up a trust, a foundation, how to ring fence certain things. But more importantly is that the family owner, a family business owner, needs to decide what they want. And advisors, bank advisors and so on, would be able to give them the kind of guidance they will be able to achieve their goals. Su Kwan, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for the very sound and very progressive advice. Thank you, Anita. Thank you.